Taylor here from SME Strategy. We help teams create and implement their strategic plan successfully and help them get to their one destination. And today, I want to talk to you about creating your why with the help of your people. So I was talking to a podcast guest the other day. We have a podcast on strategy and implementation. And I asked him, I said, hey, you know, when you entered this new organization and went through the process of, you know, getting acclimatized, getting to know people, you know, he shared with me something that I really thought was insightful in his process for not only getting to know his team, but engaging with them to create a shared vision of their organization early. And I want to walk you through the process that he followed and the process that we'd recommend for any manager and leader trying to move their team forward in creating a why. So first thing that he did was he interviewed all of the members of their team to really get their buy-in. Okay, so met with them one-on-one. -on -one, Asked them, you know, what they wanted to accomplish with the organization, what they saw as success, and wanted to hear, you know, what their concerns, wants, and needs were. So fundamentally, what he did in that process was he got their buy-in. You know, of course, he was trying to meet. Of course, he was trying to understand the organization. But it was a really easy step to get buy-in from his team. You know, it gave them the opportunity to share what was important to them so that they felt heard. It allowed him to understand what they wanted to accomplish, so they had their stake in the plan. And then he was able to have conversation with them so that it wasn't him responsible for all of that. It was them responsible, so them being able to take their own ownership of the plan to help move that forward. So, you know, lessons for you, whether you're a new season or seasoned experienced leader, is how can you get the buy-in of your team as part of the strategic planning process. One of the things I love about facilitating strategy sessions the way we do as facilitators and not consultants is it's all rooted in you know, psychology and getting the buy-in of the leadership team. It's their plan, not our plan. So creating a process and a structure so that it's always on the shoulders of the people implementing the plan, not on the consultant who said, hey, do this. So how can you get buy-in from your team early so that it's their plan and not your plan. The other thing that he did that I thought was really insightful was use their input, okay? So he came in fresh, you know, with a new perspective, but he really needed to get the group mind and the group consensus and the group understanding of what's going on. So I, as I always say, there's more of them than there are of you, and you don't know everything. You might know a lot, but you don't have that full picture. So what he did was got their input so that he could make the most informed decision and leverage the expertise of the members of his team. And so you as a CEO, you as a leader, have insightful leaders around you, and they have a different perspective than you have. Okay, So I invite you and I encourage you to lean on your senior managers to look at their perspective to try to understand things from their seat, and then you'll have a more clear picture. You don't necessarily need to do everything that they say, but look at it as an input to help you make a better decision. You don't see everything. There's more of them than there are of you. So if you can successfully leverage your senior managers, you're going to be more successful in your strategy implementation and be more successful as a CEO. The other thing that it does is it empowers them. You know, when you lean on people, when you ask them for their input, you know, it puts the onus on them to give you great information, and then you're really creating that partnership together. As Keith Ferrazzi says, it's really like co-creation. How can you co-create the future with your team? If you're not using their input, then you're just kind of doing whatever you think you want, you should do. If you're getting their input, it's really developing a partnership. Some people do it intuitively. Some people have to work on it. In almost every case, I've seen it create greater results because you're getting that diversity of thought, diversity of perspective, and diversity of understanding, which means you're going to get better results. The third thing I really liked about what he did in talking to the team was understood their perspective on why the company existed. You know, he had previous agency experience, came to the table with what he thought the vision of the company should be, but if he didn't have that buy-in and didn't have that understanding of what everybody else saw, that we they'd be moving in different directions and what we call the multiple destination trap. And so he was able to solicit all of that information to create one consistent company-wide, company purpose in terms of, you know, 
who is the agency, what do they do, who do they do it for, and really take all of those bits of information to create something that was consistent and aligned across the entire organization. You know, instead of creating something brand new on his own, took the inspiration and information from everybody on the team, put it together and created something that was aligned and that people already were connected to at the root of what the company is. You know, there's a lot of talk around the great resignation and employees feeling disengaged. I believe and I assert it's because they don't have a connection to why the organization exists. You know, yes, we're trying to make the world a better place by selling this software solution. But, you know, really, is that what we're doing? If you're not connected to it, then your context of showing up to work occurs differently. You're going to be disengaged and you're going to leave. If you're an employee, you know, this might resonate with you with jobs. You're saying, eh, I'm just kind of bored or I'm not challenged or I'm not interested. It's probably because you're not connected to a purpose that was bigger than you. Um, if we think about it from a psychological and organizational behavior, it's the sense of belonging and self-fulfillment. So it's not just, hey, let's have a why for why's sake. It's, you know, we are physiologically designed to have a bigger purpose. And if we don't have that bigger purpose, we are going to search for it. And, and that's what happens with disengagement. So as a leader and as a CEO, you know, I encourage you, I recommend that you connect your teams to that bigger purpose. If you don't, they're just going to be doing a job. They're going to be disengaged and they're going to look for something that's more fulfilling. And with all of the remote work options out there and all of the cool companies that are doing purpose-driven work, if you don't have a bigger why, um, your company is going to suffer. So create that, connect that, have that conversation and engage your team. And uh, that CEO did that extremely well. So how to implement this with your team as you're moving forward in your strategy implementation, you know, get your people bought into the entire process of creating the why and creating the direction for your team. Use their input, their perspectives, not just what you bring to the table. You're going to have better results. You're going to have better diversity. You're going to have better buy-in. It's going to move you forward and create your company why. You know, some people call it a mission statement. Some people call it a mission. Some people call it a purpose, whatever it is. Make sure that there's something bigger than the work that connects and attracts your people. You're going to get better outcome. You're going to get better engagement. You're going to have greater happiness. And you're going to be more clear strategically on what you're doing and why you're going to do it. That's going to help you focus. You're going to get better results. And that's what we're all here for. So if you are looking for somebody that can help you align your process, align your team, help you create that purpose or why, and facilitate your strategic planning process. We'd be happy to talk to you about how we can do that. We facilitate strategic planning sessions virtually. We facilitate strategic planning sessions in person. We do stakeholder engagement, and we also support the implementation. So we can help you accomplish your goals as it relates to organizational guidance, and then we can coach you one-on-one -on -one to support you get there. So uh, click on the link in the description to find out more about that. You can have a conversation with myself or somebody on our team. And with that, I just really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it helps you create a great structure for getting buy-in with your team. I hope it helps you get greater engagement. It helps you as a CEO have a great work life. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Give us a like. Give us a comment. Um, it's just a little thing you can do that helps us get in front of more people. And uh, if you do subscribe and hit the bell, let me make sure that you get notified every time we have a new video. So thanks for watching. My name is Anthony Taylor. I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy. I really thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Take care.